concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge by Claudio Orlando, Rafael Ostrovsky, Vanish Ray Rao, Amit Sahai, and Ivan Visconti. And Vanish Ray will give the talk. So please go ahead. I'm a PhD student at UCLA, and here I present Statistical Concurrent Non-Malleable Zero Knowledge. This is a joint work with uh, Claudio Orlandi, Rafael Ostrowski, Amit Saha, and Ivan Visconti. Let us set the stage for our problem statement with zero knowledge, one of those primitives that, although at their face value look just infeasible, have a huge line of research. To recall the necessary background for our problem statement, we need to look at the path in research of zero knowledge. Just a very quick look at the beginning. Zero knowledge, as we all know, uh, enables a prover to convince a verifier of some st statement. And uh, the basic adversarial model involves just the two parties to interact with each other. If the prover is adversarial, her objective is to convince the verifier of some invalid statement. And if the verifier is adversarial, his objective is to garner more information than he is supposed to from the interaction. With this being where we began, the later research naturally took to strengthening the model uh, in various directions. And two of the important directions of strengthening are, one, to allow the adversary to take the role of both the prover and the uh, verifier simultaneously, so that uh, he can garner more information than he's supposed to from the left interaction and possibly use this in trying to prove an invalid statement in the right interaction. This strengthening of resilience against such attackers is given by non-malleable zero knowledge. A further strengthening in the same direction is to allow the adversary to interact with not just a single prover and a single verifier, but with multiple provers and verifiers concurrently. And resilience against such attackers is given by concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge. With this being one direction of strengthening, the other important direction of strengthening is to achieve zero knowledge against not just uh, computationally bounded ver uh, adversarial verifiers, but against com computationally unbounded ones. We are talking statistical zero knowledge, of course. Now, given these two directions of strengthenings, a natural question is, can we achieve both the strengthenings simultaneously? That is, can we achieve statistical concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge? And this is the question that we pursue in our work. Before we go ahead and uh, look at our protocol for statistical concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge, just to put our goal in perspective, note that we are hoping to achieve statistical concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge, so we can only hope for an arg argument of knowledge. Uh, an orthogonal uh, direction of achieving computational concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge. Proof of knowledge was uh, pursued by Lin, Pass, Seng, and Ven Venkita Subramaniam at Crypto 2010. Now having recalled the necessary background, we are ready to look at our protocol. Instead of looking at our protocol uh, at once and then going into the proof of security, let us see how to, de how to design our protocol ground up uh, which, which should already give some good intuition into the pro proof of security. Our starting point is this construction of computational concurrent non-malleable zero knowledge argument of knowledge. The first work in this line of research, designed by Barak Prabhakaran and Sahai at Fox 2006. We call this protocol the BPS protocol. Now, given this protocol that achieves computational concurrent non uh, co computational zero knowledge, and concurrent non-malleability, our objective is to somehow modify it to get statistical zero knowledge while still maintaining concurrent non-malleability. Now, in doing so, we would like to identify the, identify the core aspect of the BPS protocol that makes it zero knowledge only computational. In, in the BPS protocol, 
At some stage, the prover needs to send a statistically binding commitment to the witness of the state statement being proved. And on the other, other hand, the simulator who does not have access to the access to the witness can only send a statistical binding commitment to a value that is not a witness, thus rendering the simulation to be only computational. Now the objective would be to eliminate the statistical binding property of this commitment that's sent by the prover. The question to ask now is, how crucial is the statistical binding property for the proof of security to go through? It turns out that this is very crucial. Just to recall, uh, the security model we are working in, we would require existence of a simulator for uh, which for every adversary outputs uh, a transcript that is indistinguishable from the view of uh, the adversary, one. Two, it also outputs a set of witnesses for the statements that the adversary manages to convince, convince the verifiers of. Uh, an observation on the proof of security of the BPS protocol is that this statistical binding property of the commitment scheme is essential to prove uh, witness ex extractability, but it is not so crucial to prove uh, simulatability. Hence, the idea would be to uh, replace this commitment scheme um, uh, uh, from being statistically hiding to, um, sorry, from statistically binding to statistically hiding, so that we can very easily establish statistical simulatability of our protocol. And then to prove uh, witness extractability of a protocol, we'll move to a hybrid where this commitment scheme changes from being statistically hiding to statistically binding, and from there we'll complete the proof. Now to implement this idea, to enable the simulator to change this commitment scheme from being statistically hiding to statistically binding, we'll consider two, these two sets, SSH and SSP, and have this commitment scheme be parameterized by some value k that comes from either of these sets. And these sets are in such a way that if k comes from SSH, then the commitment scheme is statistically hiding. And if k comes from SSP, then the commitment scheme is statistically binding. Such commitment schemes already exist in literature. And they're called mixed commitment schemes. They were, they were studied by Damgar and Nielsen at Crypto 2002. Now, in our protocol, to enable the simulator to uh, meddle with this value k, we of course will not fix this value k in the, pro in the protocol, but we'll have the prover and the verifier run some protocol prior to this BPS protocol and have the outcome of this protocol dictate the value of k. And naturally, we'll have this uh, protocol, sub protocol, to be a coin flipping protocol over the union of these two sets, SSH and SSP. And note that, recall that in, uh, uh, in, in the real world, we'll require that this commitment scheme be statistically hiding. Hence, we require that this outcome of the coin flipping protocol land in the set SSH with overwhelming probability. Thus, we require that the set SSH forms an overwhelming fraction of the union. Um, think of, for concreteness, these sets being uh, uh, SSH being the set of non-DDH tuples and uh, SSB being the set of DDH tuples. Now, uh, having added this uh, extra protocol, let us look at the specifics of this protocol. We decided that this protocol be a coin flipping protocol. So can we just uh, put the basic coin flipping, flipping protocol where um, the verifier would first send uh, a commitment to his share of randomness, and then the prover sends his share of randomness, and finally the verifier would open this commitment. And uh, the outcome would be the XOR of uh, uh, the two shares. Note that this is not enough for us because we require that the simulator be able to cheat uh, uh, in the coin flipping protocol so that he can bias the outcome of the coin flipping protocol. Here he is not at, uh, able to cheat. In particular, in our protocol, we'll require that uh, the simulator be able to cheat in the uh, coin flipping protocols of the right uh, of the right sessions. 
um, so the modification that we'll introduce is that instead of the verifier opening uh, the commitment, that is instead of him sending both the committed value and the randomness used in the commitment, we'll have him send just the committed value and a zero knowledge argument that RV was indeed the value that was used in the commitment. Uh, with this, we hope that uh, using the simulator of this underlying zero knowledge argument, our simulator will also work. Note that we will not be able to use just any uh, zero knowledge argument because we are in the concurrent setting, hence we need a concurrent zero knowledge argument. And furthermore, we require that this adversary uh, should not be able to bias the outcome of the coin flipping protocols of the left sessions after having received these simulated proofs, hence we require non malleability too. So what we require here is a non malleable, non a concurrent non malleable zero knowledge argument, and BPS is uh, a concurrent non malleable zero knowledge argument. And in our uh, protocol, we use this specific uh, BPS protocol. Uh, so our protocol uh, at a high level, uh, in summary, looks like this. We have this coin flipping protocol uh, with the modification that we just mentioned, followed by the BPS protocol with the modification that the statistically binding commitment scheme is replaced by this mixed uh, commitment scheme with its parameter uh, being dictated by the outcome of the coin flipping protocol. Now with this being the major idea, uh, our proof of security would involve a lot of uh, technical challenges, although we'll not have time to go over uh, the details of these technical challenges. Uh, a noteworthy point on, uh, uh, a, no a noteworthy point here is that one of the challenges that we will um, encounter in our proof of security is that in the BPS protocol, at some stage, uh, the verifier needs to send a concurrently extractable commitment to some value. And our proof of security would require a reduction to extract from this concurrently extractable commitment while not uh, rewinding an external uh, challenger. Um, in a recent work, uh, Goyal, Lin, Pandey, Pass, and Sahai uh, presented a technique to uh, perform such a concurrent extraction. By applying this uh, generalized concurrent extraction of commitment schemes, uh, our proof is uh, simplified by a huge extent. Um, for more uh, uh, technical difficulties, I encourage you to look at our paper. Uh, with this, I conclude. <laughs>